I'm hyped, man. I'm ready to go. And Caleb, it is impressive to kind of see that, you know, finally we, we have a rookie doing some things right that looks like it's actually going to go on a path it's supposed to go on. I mean, I love the one clip. You know, it's hard to tell from ground level highlights what's going on and things like that. I mean, the Absolutely. best way is obviously to watch A22 film, right? But, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, there's this one clip where you can just see him looking left looking left and you see Tremaine Edmonds 49 kind of go across the screen and then he just throws right. And it's just like, okay, good, good job, kid. You looked off the linebacker and he's a pretty good linebacker. You know what I mean? So it's like stuff like that. That's nice to see from, you know, even a rookie quarterback. And I think there is absolutely no reason why, um, why his progression has any, you know, huge obstacles that he won't grow exactly how he should. But, um, you know, a lot of people are, are placing a lot of crazy numbers out there. I mean, I've been hearing we're going to have three wide receivers with a thousand yards each. Okay, DJ well, yeah. Moore said that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. What do you think of that? I mean, because if that's the case, then, you know, you're throwing for a lot of yards there, right? There's, a, there's more than three guys on the team. So, yeah, exactly. You, you know, between the tight ends, you got to add at least another, another 900,000. And the running back, you know, Swift is really good at uh, yards after the catch. So you're adding another four. Jeez. I mean, I don't see it happening, but hell, maybe, maybe I'm. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we will see, you know, at least Odunze get 800 and the two veteran receivers get 1,000. That would be sensational. And a lot of it, I think, in today's NFL is yards after the catch. Uh, you'll have the, the speedsters on the team to stretch off in, uh, defenses and, and connect on long ball from now, now and then. And with Caleb's uh, escapability, he's going to create big – uh, big play uh, uh, touchdowns or, or big gainers. So there is the chance to get a lot of yards. I just think that we should always, when you, we're talking about a rookie quarterback, should always temper expectations because you're going to be let down. I know it from Trubisky, Fields, and a number of other quarterbacks in Bears history. Do you know who holds the rookie record for passing yards? Oh, that's a good one. Man, I'm going to guess Jim McMahon. No, you actually just said his name. Um, who, who did I say? Short -term Mitch memory. Trubisky. It's Mitchell. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, and and now you gotta you gotta admit though that a lot of those passes because I have an argument or debate every time with Mike North on uh, at the bar room when he's on. A lot of those yards that Trubisky completed were. You know, wide receiver screens, they were short passes, the ball was in the air, five, ten yards. His long ball, he didn't complete that many passes. And and intermediary uh passes, that, that there was also a drought there. You know, I think he, he benefited a lot from good defensive play and, and good uh yards after the catch. Uh what do you guys think? Yeah, I think so too. I mean my biggest joke with the last few coaches and the with Mitch specifically and then Fields, you know, is like you ask Mitch Trubisky, like, what are you good at, Mitch? Like, what do you want to do? And he goes, like, well, I, I'm pretty athletic. I like to sh throw short, you know, on, on the run. And then Matt Nagy was like, all right, shut up. Uh, four wide, <laughs> uh, throw deep and bubble screens, you know. Um, and then Fields, kind of the same thing, you know. It's like, hey, what do you like to do well? Like, throw deep and I'm really athletic. All right, man, we're going to make you a pocket passer, so shut up. And then we're going to, you know, just hand off on all these things. And it's just so I think that's probably what you're alluding to with Caleb is just kind of it's going to be nice to see these. And I'm seeing some comments, especially with uh, with Shorty here. We're talking about DJ Moore talking about making every play the same and how you're saying a lot of the modern NFL is just run after the catch. And I think from what we've heard so far um, for Caleb, it's they're not going to ask him to do too much and just you know, you can read tea leaves in terms of what, what people, what moves you make and what you do. And I'm watching, I was doing a, telling Polly, I'm doing a full rewatch of the uh, last season. And it's kind of fun when you, when you watch every game in order, you kind of get a different vibe than when you live it week to week and you, every yes. emotions week to week and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But when you kind of go through it really quickly, all in all, there's a, such a tone to the season. I remember just thinking, man, if Cole Komet gets the ball a little bit more, an open space and just give him a drag route, right? Open up the field on the outside, give him a drag route. DJ Moore, give him a slant for Christ's sake. I think I'm, I'm like 10, 11 games in. I don't think I saw more than 10 slants that were just executed, you know, on the run. Um, 
So I think that's kind of what you're alluding to is like, hopefully you're just not asking Caleb Williams to do too much. You got these skilled guys. DJ Moore is one of the best run after catch guys, like up there with AJ Brown, right? Just big, chunky, like stocky receiver who can shrug off some tackles. And then you can sprinkle in those like fun little splash plays with Rome and Keenan's your security blanket over the middle. Um, I'm probably taking DeAndre Swift in fantasy just because I think he's going to get like six catches, seven catches a game, right? Mm-hmm. They're giving these little – those. Uh, I'm watching a lot of Matt Waldron stuff, and he does a lot of those uh, – uh, statistically, he like goes into empty set more than anybody else from last year, but he did it with like motions. So he would have the, you know two running backs in the back. They both motion up. Now it's an empty, and it's just one of those like extended handoff plays. Nice. Right, it's like you get four six yards, but it's it's so automatic and stuff like that. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Is it going to lead to Caleb having a four thousand yard season? Mm, maybe not, just because that's not realistic. But I think hopefully that's what I'm. That's the tea leaves I'm seeing right now is just kind of like simple, simple, simple. Let the defense do some work. I'm not feeling too confident about this O line right now. So like hopefully, you know, it, it's just keeping it simple and not asking him to be the hero in season one because that would be the quickest way to ruin another quarterback right is like mm-hmm. we ask we keep asking these guys to be a hero in their first and second season to get their their brains bashed in yeah you know and you're right i agree with you it's we've had so many offensive coordinators in the past saying we're going to build the offense around the talents of the players and we've never really seen that and so hopefully shane is a guy that's going to live up to that expectation because we know that's the best way to win uh, football games he's got so many weapons and so now it's just about scouting the opposition for the next week and then saying okay we've got these players or these formations or or these strengths on our offense that can combat their weaknesses you know because we the versatility of players and formations that they have they can run two tight ends out of the back which i saw seattle do last season they can do a three wide receiver set with two tight ends wouldn't be good for deandre Swift, but that that could be one of the formations that they do and or they can have you know deandre swift lined out and then in motion putting him in the running back position with the two tight ends already in the field and then boom he's gone on a long run or a long pass catch. So they've got all this, these weapons that allow Shane to be uh, uh, versatile, but also, you know, if he, if he can figure out a good plan every week to use these players strengths and that versatile plan for each week, this could be a real explosive offense. Absolutely. Yeah. I just, I want to let Shorty know that at some point I did have hair. I know it's hard to believe, but I, it used to be long and luscious. And um, and then I, I must have been – I was not that old. I mean, me and David were still working together, I think, maybe. I was like 24 years old, and for Halloween, I decided to go as a blue man group, right? And I'm just going to be fully dedicated and shave my head. And then like <laughs> six months later, I'm like, it's not coming back. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, like, oh. Oh. So, yeah, that's how that went. And then oh, the hair just went, and now I can rest. And then, yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, sat down to have a few beers with a longtime uh, film cameraman in Chicago. And this was back, you know, in the last century. So we're, you know, uh, t- uh, crews, TV crews were still shooting film, you know, lace up. The, and so he was relaying this story that when he was in his early 20s, he w- w- went out to shoot some film with one of the big producers in Chicago and stuff. And then he realized that he had done something wrong when he was threading the film and the camera and that the film was probably going to c- come out all overexposed or burn-ins and stuff like that. And he said, I could literally see the hair from my head falling down because he was so stressed out. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that scared the shit out of me because I, I was in my early 20s and in the business of shooting film thinking, I don't want to ever be that fucking, oh, excuse my language, uh, terrified of... Uh, you know, uh, losing my hair just because I did something wrong at work. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually, I always wanted to, you know, go as George Costanza and dedicate myself to that. And, and now I could probably pull that off pretty well. Oh, yeah. so, you know, so. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> 